Welcome to this Rhino Surfacing tutorial. Uh, my name is Thomas Perrell and today we'll be going through the design of a lacrosse stick. For this tutorial um, I've gone ahead and downloaded the NCAA 2007 men's lacrosse rules and if you go through it it's 113 pages long and not everything in here obviously is to do with the actual lacrosse head construction. Um, they have conveniently provided a PDF document which has some of the critical dimensions in here and so we will be using that. But what I went ahead and did was um, created a dimension cheat sheet um, of, it's a, this is a little JPEG that has most of the uh, critical dimensions and design features that need to be built in to this head or the or the cross. <clears throat> um, as you can notice here, um, all of the dimensions are based off of the throat of the cross and so that's where we'll be basing our origin in Rhino off of. So we'll be building up from this throat and down from there. So we'll build our, our head up from there and we'll build our um, our handle uh, going down from here and this is going to be a very um, useful dimension line to have. Um, so again we'll be flipping back and forth with this and it, it tends to help help you out so what you want to do initially and this is what we're going to do is um, try and lay out as much of this um, or represent as much of these uh, rules as we can in Rhino. So let's go ahead and actually in addition I've got a JPEG of an existing lacrosse head and um, I'll, I'll be bringing that in as, as a reference to, to take out some amount of um, guesswork and ideally what you'll be wanting to do is go into the field and, and figure out um, based on you know you know, lacrosse player feedback, you know, hey, what what is this, what what kind of shape do you like here, how aggressive do you want this, what kind of handle, you know, is this actually a good material, um, are, are you finding, you know, what kind of stiffness characteristics do you need in this lacrosse head, and all amount, all number of, you know, questions that, you know, really, if we really wanted to push this design a whole lot, uh, that's, that would be um, critical for you to do. But since this is more of a modeling exercise, I'm going to use an existing unit as a uh, reference point, something that we can start uh, a building from. Alright, so let's go into Rhino. I'm going to start a new document. We're going to be using um, inches as our dimension unit because that's what's in the um, the rule book they've used inches and I'm going to head going to going to turn off the grid lines here just so that it's a little bit more legible in our screen capture and as we said before I'm going to go go and bring um, this JPEG in to Rhino um, as a reference the process that I'm going to do is is build up a, um, a set of dimensioned lines that we can start building curves around and, and to get those dimensions in relatively easily I'm going to bring in that JPEG and as a background bitmap. Alright and now we can start uh, building our uh, cross. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, first, I'll start laying the vertical dimensions here. So that's uh, one and a quarter inches, three inches, five inches, and then across those um, dimensions, we'll be laying in lines that are um, two and three quarters inches, three and a quarter inches, and four and a quarter inches, respectively, on those dimensions. Um, as we see here, there's a little bit about of flexibility. Uh, the widest point of the cross head uh, needs to be six and a half inches at the front and six inches on the back. And they haven't really specced out how 
um, tall this or at what point this uh, needs to be located and additionally if we look at our cheat sheet uh, we'll also see that the entire head from the throat to the tip of the unit needs to be about 10 inches long so that is also a dimension that needs to be added in here as well so let's start building using the dimension commands let's turn on snap and snap as the name implies snaps to the grid points that we have in Rhino and I'm going to use that to snap to the zero point, the origin in Rhino and I'm going to turn that off after that and I'm going to just start typing in dimensions right now so the first one is 1.25 inches and as you see once you type it in it automatically got typed into the the, com the command line there and the dimension now is constrained to one point you know one and a quarter inches from the origin and if we hit shift it is constrained vertically as well so just hit enter and drag it out now it's a very big dimension so I'm going to go ahead and change the dimension properties on here make that about 0.1 looks about right 0.1 inches tall here and I can tell that I'm gonna have to move my background bitmap a little bit so if you right if you right click on the um, the viewport window go to background bitmap and you can move your bitmap to a more convenient location and let's continue with these dimensions here now if I hit alt you'll notice that these guys start popping up. This is the O snap um, settings here, and 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 Alt uh, toggles it on and off. This is a very useful feature to have, and it's a relative snap, so it can start snapping to endpoints. And if you've got other uh, curves in there, near would snap onto the curve. So any at any point on the curve, it can start snapping. Um, midpoint is you know the midpoint of any line center of circles uh, quadrants is also pretty helpful um, those are those are the O snaps that I tend to use most often so again let's go ahead and the next datum point is three inches tall oops three inches type that in and put it in next one is five inches and the last one is 10 inches okay now let's start putting in some horizontal lines I'm going to use a polyline command and it works very similar to the dimension just go ahead and type in whatever length that needs to be and that's two and three quarter inches, 2.75 inches. Hit shift to constrain it horizontally and hit um, enter to stop it. And you hit enter again and it'll, or the um, right click button again and it will, it will invoke the last command. And that's three and a quarter inches, 3.25. At five inches, it's four and a quarter. and the last set of horizontal lines are six and six and a half oops 6.5 enter and click for the second dimension now I've roughly placed them and I'm going to use the move command to snap to the midpoint here and move them to the correct uh, location. So pick the pick the line and start the move command. We're going to O snap to the midpoint and O snap to the end. Same command, 